Okay, we have another good integral here sent to me by Sid. We have the integral from minus infinity to infinity of this product from zero to x of the sum of this whole thing to the x dx. Okay, at first it looks kind of impossible with everything going on, mixing a product and a sum, cosines, gamma function. There's so much going on, it's kind of intimidating. But what I found was you can kind of just break it up and work through it like straightforward methods and it's not that bad. Just like what I did to start was just focus on this sum and don't worry about everything else going on. Let's just try to figure this out. The way I did it was to start plugging in terms starting at k equals zero. So like cosine at zero is just gonna be one. And then before I start plugging into the gamma function, like the first term is gonna be gamma of one. But with k, we're talking about integer values for something in the form I guess I could use k or n, whatever. But for something like this, for an integer value, this is the same thing as n factorial. So I think it's gonna be helpful to actually write it that way. So like for gamma of one, let's write that using this as zero factorial. And then for the next term, when k equals one, we have cosine of like, we'll write it as one pi over, now this becomes one factorial. We'll just do it all in terms of factorials because we know what's happening. Then the next one, cosine two pi over two factorial. And this thing is just gonna keep going like this on and on to infinity. But the nice thing about integer coefficients here in front of the pi with the cosine, we know exactly what these are. Like cosine of pi, this is just gonna be minus one. And cosine of two pi and all the even terms, the even coefficients, those are all gonna be one. So what I wanna do here is just rewrite this sum just a different way that's just gonna make it a little easier to deal with like we could write it as k to the zero to infinity, but now take this minus one and we can write it as minus one to the k over k factorial. Just noticing whenever k is even, we get the positive one. Whenever k is odd, we get the negative one. The thing about this is it's basically, well not basically, it's exactly in our form for e to the x. The power series for e to the x looks something like this. It's gonna be just x to the n over n factorial. So in our sum here, what we're doing is we're just inputting negative one. So if you plug minus one in there, you get exactly, our sum's gonna be exactly this. So this thing is the same thing as e to the minus one or just one over e. So I think I'll write it this way and then notice that we've got an x exponent on it. So if you have e to the minus one to the x, this is gonna be the same thing as e to the minus x. So it's gonna clean up a lot because we'll just take this e to the minus x, throw it back in for the whole sum part, and we can go from there. Now at this point, I did get really confused the first time around because for some reason, well actually I kind of know why, it, it seems to be like, it's easy to think that maybe this is like e to the minus n and then you should be inputting into this. And so then, I mean, let me just come off to the side. So it was like something like, oh, e to the zero, e to the one, and then adding exponents going down this road and then integrating that, that is just completely wrong. Um, it made sense for a second, but it's just not what the problem is. So this here is an X. So the way to think about it, there's no N in here. We're just summing up a bunch of these things. So what it really is, it's gonna be the integral from minus infinity to infinity. And then it's just gonna be E to the minus X times E to the minus X times E to the minus X on and on, not to infinity, but to x. And then another quick mistake I made was thinking, okay, there's x number of these, but it's not quite x because we start at n equals zero. For it to just be x, we'd have to start at one. So there's one extra term. So there's actually x plus one terms. It's a little weird to think about when x is not necessarily an integer. I'm not, I'm actually not 100% sure how to explain the part, but that's how I did it was getting that extra term from the zero thinking of it like x plus one terms, but x plus one, but multiplying e to the minus x, x plus one times, we can write that as e to the minus x all to the x plus one power. Then from here with exponent properties, I'll just multiply in that x plus one exponent to combine this together. So then when we do that, I'm gonna do it a little carefully though, because I'm gonna to wanna to keep the, I actually wanna keep the minus sign out front, so I'm gonna write it like e minus, and then we'll multiply it together and we'll get, we'll write it like this, e minus x squared plus x. 
I do it that way because I just want to complete the square on this over here. So we'll do, to do that, if we have x plus one half and we square it, we get x squared plus x on the middle term. The last term becomes plus a fourth. I don't want to change it, so we do minus one fourth. Now distributing the minus sign back in and putting it as an exponent, this is going to look like e minus x plus one half. Minus times minus is plus. I can split that off as a separate term. We can have that as e to the one fourth. But then this part here is just a constant. I can bring that out front of the integral. So I'll do that. I'll write it as, doesn't really matter. I'll write it as the fourth root of e in front of our integral. You may see where it's going. It's looking a lot like the Gaussian integral. I'll do one unnecessary step. You can do this in your head, skip it at home, but I'm gonna do a u substitution just to clean that up. The reason I say it's unnecessary is because the derivative of it is just one. Okay, so, so I only do it just to show, just to kind of clean it up. So u equals this, du equals dx. Because we're going to infinities, the substitution doesn't really change anything. So we have the fourth root of e here, same bounds. And now we just have e minus u squared du. But then this right here, this is the full Gaussian integral. So this is just gonna have a well-known value of square root of pi. So putting it together for my final solution on this, we just get the fourth root of e times square root of pi, and that's it. All right, there you go. I thought that was really interesting. It's kind of straightforward in some ways, but then there's a couple places where you get tripped up for sure. Also, there's some really kind of unique things in this that we haven't really done in other videos, so thought it was a good one. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.